Hi there, my name is Elijah Clark. I'm doing this presentation with Stephen Seeley, Erica Bell, and Dylan Ayer Kincaid. And today, we're going to talk to you about poverty in St. John. So, how bad is poverty in St. John? Well, the Canadian national average for poverty rate in 2018 was 14.2%. Shrink that down to just New Brunswick, it's 17.1%, almost 3% higher. And if we look at St. John, that number has actually rose to 22.5%. We're looking at almost a 10% difference between the Canadian average to just St. John just by itself. So as we can see, poverty is very high and very bad in St. John. So, what is our thesis statement? The poverty rates in St. John are terrible. It is our belief that the rates can be drastically reduced through the dedicated approach to education. Consequentially, a lack of education also leads to another main causes of poverty. Lack of employment, a shrinking middle class, and the cycle of poverty. So what kind of poverty is St. John dealing with? St. John is dealing with generational poverty. Generational poverty is the kind of poverty in which, say, 50 years ago, one family member ended up going on welfare and staying on welfare. That person never went out to go get a job ever in their life, and they had kids. Then their kids did the exact same thing as their father or mother, and then as that goes on, they do the exact same thing. And that cycle continues, keeping the mindset that they can live off welfare by either uh, by getting through their, their, their year or their days or weeks by just living off the government's money and not making any changes. The issue with that is while they might go through high school, they might go get their GED, they don't have the drive and they don't have the will, nor do they really have the open accessibility to go to further education. Meaning that things like university, college, which would cost them 3000 up towards to $7,000 a year, they don't have accessible to them because they're going to be living week by week or day by day on the welfare that's given to them. So how exactly do we measure poverty? For those who are impoverished and are unable to meet the MBM, market basket measure, the MBM is a means of measuring the ability to purchase a specific basket of essential goods and services within a community. More than half of all families living in poverty still have a breadwinner. They are classified as the working poor. So, who does poverty affect? Poverty affects those, of course, who are living in it, their community, the social assistance programs they rely on, the government, and taxpayers. Because such programs, such as welfare, welfare, are in use, of course, if something changes like that, it's going to affect the community and those people who are living in it. It's going to affect the government because, of course, they're the ones who are actually paying for those programs, and the taxpayers. We are technically the ones who are paying for it. So poverty affects everybody. The higher the poverty rate, the more people who require the, those assistance programs, the more money it's going to cost the taxpayers, the more money it's going to cost the government. And now we're going to talk about the factors affecting poverty in St. John. And I'm going to hand this off to Stephen to talk about more. Thank you, Elijah. The first factor that I'll be sharing today is inflation. Inflation is defined as the negative change in the purchasing power of a currency. What that means for us is that the cost for the MBM that was mentioned earlier changes from year to year. This is usually expressed as a percentage and is referred to as the purchasing power of currency. Inflation affects everyone, but it does not do so equally. The wealthy are much less impacted than the poor. Those who are impoverished must spend a higher percentage of their income on basic necessities. Even more worrisome is that inflation can push those who are at the bottom of the middle class into poverty. Inflation rates continue to grow at a consistent pace. However, wages are lagging behind. An important note is that the majority of those living in poverty are working minimum wage jobs. The purchasing power of a minimum wage worker's income has increased by a measly penny since 1975, while the cumulative inflation rate since that same year is 339.13%. Now, a declining middle class is our next factor. A healthy middle class is the backbone of a flourishing economy. 
with the city's population dropping by 3.6% between the last two censuses and the poverty rate climbing to 22.5%, there is proof that St. John's middle class is on the decline. Since the middle class are the biggest drivers of economic growth, this has a negative impact on the city's economy as a whole. While the trickle-down effect is expected to begin with the upper class, in reality it is more strongly carried through by the middle class. When the middle class is unable to contribute as much as they should, the lower class suffers as well. When the middle class is able to spend more on consumer goods and services, there's a greater economic uptick in the industries that employ much of the lower class such as fast food or other jobs that don't require a higher level of education. Speaking of education, we have an issue with a lack thereof. So, when generational poverty is present, there's often a lack of resources in the home to enrich the learning of young children before they reach school. So this will be about multiple levels here, as it is also shown that in the households, the parents that are often working multiple jobs or are disinclined to work at all due to their own experience with generational poverty, therefore their children are not able to be enriched as much as they should be prior to joining kindergarten. Consequentially, the children are already behind their classmates by their first day of school. Studies show that children coming from poverty are four and a half times more likely to lag behind their peers in vocabulary development. From this point, the children are also facing the stresses of their unideal home life, as well as the judgment of their classmates due to the preconceptions and the negative connotations that are usually associated with people living in poverty. From this point, this can kind of lead to the child lashing out in school, other behavioral issues, as well as poor grades. All of these matters compound to further weigh down the child. Now. Where should St. John focus their efforts? There are five focused neighborhoods that St. John really has issues with, with poverty. The numbers here are well above 50% of the residents are living in poverty. These areas include Crescent Valley, the Lower West Side, Old North End, the South End, and Waterloo Village. Now, for St. John to effectively eradicate much of the poverty that it faces, a focus must be placed on educating the residents of these five focused neighborhoods. So those who have lived in the city or lived along the outskirts in the valley, perhaps, we've all probably heard of at least a couple of these areas, and we ourselves probably carry our own predisposition to think kind of lesser of the people who live there. As wrong as that may sound, a lot of us would be guilty of such. Now, with the city centering their efforts on these five neighborhoods, this quintet, these people could actually stand a fighting chance. So each of these aforementioned areas has a pre-existing community center, or, a, or an equivalent of such, from which the city could institute new programs aimed at educating the residents. With each of these areas being near enough to their target audience, accessibility would not be an issue. Uh, it is kind of well known that people who are living in poverty they might not have access to easier modes of transportation, such as a vehicle, or their vehicle may not be adequate enough to travel long distances or frequently to get different education that they may not even feel is 100% necessary. So by having it as close as we can to these problem areas, we would increase the chances of having success with these people. So what would we recommend St. John do? Firstly, we would make post-secondary education free. We would place a renewed focus on preaching the importance of learning marketable skills and teaching about financial topics. Now, these topics would include budgeting, a limiting debt, and most importantly, investing. So by making university and college free, doors are open for some students that would have otherwise been shut forever. Now, this has been implemented in other countries such as Sweden, Denmark, and Finland, and there are others as well. Uh, not coincidentally, these countries have remarkably low poverty rates. So by teaching about finances, specifically investing, the cycle of poverty can be chipped away at through small investments geared towards growth, with the eventual goal being to escape poverty by having their money make money. Lastly, we would also have the implementation of mentorship programs, 
where volunteers who have already overcome poverty themselves and become successful come in and they speak to those who were in the same situation they were in prior uh, by having someone who is living proof that what they're saying actually works the potential for the message getting through to the people would be much higher than it would be otherwise i personally have had you know public speakers come into classes and they'll be talking about something and if if you don't believe what they're saying you become quite disinterested and you just space out but if they're passionate about what they're talking about if you know that they know what they're talking about they immediately grab your attention you pay attention you remember and you actually care about what it is that they have to say so our anticipated results if these changes were implemented more students would be going to university or college obviously you know if students don't have to pay these thousands of dollars to get their post-secondary education a lot more of them will be pursuing that route instead of just working lower income jobs and just not really giving themselves a chance. The number of students coming from poverty who will pursue post-secondary education will rise drastically. Uh, upon graduating, the students will be able to acquire employment in much more lucrative careers than they otherwise could have. As I mentioned before, the current outlook is really them just going into minimum wage jobs or sometimes not working at all but by actually getting the education they can acquire those better jobs and they can get more money and they can help break the cycle of poverty that way also countries who have already begun using the strategy have very low poverty rates as previously mentioned now this indicates that the same result is a realistic expectation for the city of st john if they commit to making these changes now we're going to leave you with this powerful quote by olivia giovetti if all students in low-income countries had just basic reading skills, an estimated 171 million people could escape extreme poverty. If all adults completed secondary education, we could cut the global poverty rate by more than half. Thank you.